Hey guys, it's David. It is Monday, January the 16th. It is a cold, drizzly day. I just got finished taking a walk a little while ago, and uh, it's a cold, drizzly day out, but uh, it felt good to get my my mile walk in today and a little light workout. Um, I wanted to thank you all for praying. It's been a tough week. I have had um, extreme fatigue for longer than I've ever experienced. It's been It's held on for about a week. And uh, I wanted to thank you all for praying because I woke up this morning and I had energy and I felt good and I still feel good. And I just wanted to thank you for, for praying for me uh, and my family. And the other thing I, I want to thank you for is your financial support. Those of you who have given, that continue to give, um, you are making an impossible situation possible. And uh, I just am so thankful that you are sensitive to God's leading when you do this and uh, and help us out, we we are just overwhelmed and so grateful. Um, many of you have have told me that you're praying for me, and um, I'm so grateful for that. Do me a favor. I don't do these videos for any kind of self promotion. I, I do these because I want you guys to get something out of this. Uh, the things that I'm learning along this journey, I just want to pass those on to you because trust me, one day you're going to need to know what I know, and. Um, I just am, am so grateful. But if you'll do me a favor, um, there are some people that I have met through this journey. Actually, they're at Sarah Cannon here in Nashville at the Cancer Institute. Uh, the first lady that I met, her name is Mary Beth, and she had received some really bad news a few weeks ago. And I have not seen her since, but we spoke healing over her and prayed for her uh, there at the at the hospital. And uh, there's a beautiful elderly lady um, named Opal that I sat across from. Uh, when I was receiving my treatments and we talked and, and we did the same thing. We spoke healing over her and prayed for her. She's a fellow believer. And um, and then our dear friend in Ohio, uh, Dwayne Bishop, he's really close with uh, my sister, Claudia, and his mom is fighting cancer right now. So if you remember those names uh, and when you pray, when you pray for me, pray for them as well. Uh, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, many of you have told me that um, you're not just praying, but you're actually fasting and praying. And man, I'm just overwhelmed because there's so much power when you understand what fasting is and what fasting is not. And a lot of times we we want to just break it down so simple that we think that fasting impresses God uh, because we're going to skip a meal. <laughs> And he's going to do something that he wouldn't normally do. And, and that is just wrong, wrong believing. Uh, let me let me share with you uh, just and many of you know this, I know. But just in case there is anybody listening that that wants to know and go deeper into this. Fasting does not move God. God has already moved. Uh, he moved from the Garden of Gethsemane to Pilate's Hall. He moved from Pilate's Hall to the whipping post, where his body took the stripes by which we are healed. And then he went to the cross. And then once he was taken from the cross, he went to the grave. And as we all know, that on the third day, he walked out of that grave victorious. So um, God has already moved. The Bible says everything that pertains to life and godliness, uh, it's available. So grace has made all of this available, healing, salvation, so much more. Uh, but our faith is what takes hold of what God has provided. Um, so I want to I want to uh, talk to you just a little bit about fasting. Fasting does not move God, which is a big shock to a lot of people. But here's the reality and the truth: fasting moves us. Um, you know, I was I was reading the other day. I think it was in the seventeenth chapter of, of Matthew, where some of the disciples were trying to cast out a demon and they came to Jesus and they said, listen, he, we can't do this. This demon is not submitting to us. And Jesus said, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. So was Jesus talking about some kind of super hybrid demon that is a little bit more stronger against the name of Jesus? No. If you read on, he was talking about their unbelief. So this one thing that I do know, um, when you face the enemy face to face, when you face 
any kind of demonic oppression or anything like that, um, they can smell fear and they can smell faith. And when there is fear and doubt, they hold their ground. Um, and it reminded me of years ago, I had just started doing a prayer petition that I talked to you about a few videos ago. And somebody asked me in an interview and it kind of sent me down this, this journey of thinking this. They said, what kind of Christian do you want to be? And I thought about that for a minute. And I could have just given a simple, you know, churchy sound and answer. But here's what I said, and I don't know where it even came from. I said, I want to be the kind of Christian that when I walk into a room, if there's demons there, they tremble because they know I'm there. And it was about two weeks later, uh, I was scheduled to sing and my truck was giving me problems and, and I was in a vehicle crisis. So I decided to rent a, a, a SUV from uh, Enterprise Rental Car. So I go there and I made the reservation and I went there to pick the vehicle up and there was a long line that day uh, for people picking up vehicles. And there was a gentleman about six people ahead of me and he just had this wild look in his eye and he kept looking back at me and almost as if to say, what do you, what do you want? And he was just in such a hurry to get out of that building. He wanted no contact with me and that was very evident. Um, and it made me just aware, uh, and that's what I want you to be, is just aware of God's presence in your life and the power that you possess that you may not even realize you possess because of his, his spirit indwelling your spirit. So, you know, when Jesus looked at Peter, when, when Peter was saying, no, Lord, this is not going to happen. We're, we're talking about the crucifixion. We're not going to let this happen. Jesus looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Now, he, he wasn't calling Peter Satan, but he knew who was in control of Peter's speech at that moment, and he spoke to that. Same way with prayer and fasting. He spoke to the unbelief. And so um, what happens, and I shared with this with you a few weeks ago about how we are a spirit. We're a three-part being. We are a spirit. We possess a mind or a soul, whichever one you want to call it. And we live in a body, three parts, right? And so when you start to understand that breakdown, you begin to understand things like this, like fasting. The Bible talks a lot about renewing our minds. The Apostle Paul talks a lot about it in the Gospels, about, about uh, or in, in Romans and in the Corinthians, about how that uh, uh, praying and fasting and... Um, what that does, and he talks a lot about renewing our minds. And so we are the spirit and the soul of us or our minds is renewed. The only way it's renewed is by hearing the word of God and reading the word of God. But then we have a body. And so when we renew our minds, we're, we're aligning our soul with our spirit. And the last thing is our body. And our body has a will of its own. We, it, it wants to do what it wants to do, and it's spoiled. Most of us are so addicted to food and sugar and things like that that we just continually submit our bodies. And we submit instead of our bodies submitting. And um, so this is what I want you to understand. When you fast, this is what you're doing. You're saying, Lord, I align my spirit and my soul together in complete alignment with you. And the last thing is, is I'm going to whip my body into submission. I'm going to deprive my body of something that it thinks it has mastery over me, but I'm here to show my body that it does not. And that's the whole power of fasting right there, is when you take all three parts of you and you perfectly align them with the Spirit of God inside of you, there's power. I mean, unbelievable power when that happens. So for those of you who are fasting and praying for me, I cannot thank you enough. And I cannot even begin to tell you the power that you have in the throne room of God. Um, so be encouraged with that. And uh, I would challenge you 
to to do more of that. If you if you might be there saying, you know, I I've never fasted, uh, but I think I'm going to try it. Try it, understanding what I just explained, and I promise you, you will see results. Um, you, you'll see results. Uh, the Bible promises that we'll see results. So, um, guys, thank you. I want to thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for loving us, for taking care of us, for giving, uh, and most of all, for believing and standing with us and praying uh, for my for my healing. Uh, I believe that it's already done. I believe everything that I'm feeling is just side effects from the medication that I'm having to take. Um, but that when we go uh, on the last trip and we get a scan that I, I just believe that the doctors are going to say, there is no evidence of disease. That's what, that's the phrase that we are looking for and believing for. So thank you. We love you. Uh, and uh, I look forward to, to uh, catching up with you. Do me a favor. I don't, I don't do these videos for uh, any kind of publicity. Um, I appreciate it when you share them with people that, that are go maybe going through what I'm going through. Um, but do me a favor, if you don't mind, just put your, put your city and state where you're watching from. Um, and feel free to share with me uh, if these videos do you any good, because I, I that's why that's why I want to do them. I want I want to take you on this journey to healing with me. So by the end of this, um, I can look at you and say, faith works. God bless you all.